So to start with, we will always start in the front to get your caravan as level and stable as possible. You first want to lower the jockey wheel as low as you can get. The caravan is, is leaning towards the front. Now we're going to stabilize the legs individually, depending on the surface you're on. As tight as you can get it, but still hand operatable. So now you want to lift up your jockey wheel. So as the nose lifts up, it pushes out at the back and stabilizes your curve. When plugging in your 220 extension, ensure that the lid goes in with the plug. So when setting up your bed and roof section, start with unlatching your roof first. Secondly, you will lift your roof with your actuator system. Unclip the outlip with your wire frame. Lastly, you take your wedding strap from your tent, and then it's basically up. Clip it around the coupler. Next, you will lift your U frame with these easy clamp down clamps. Lift it up to the belter strap, clamp down, and attach the velcro strap. You have two thick eight more rods and two thinner six more rods for the side the fly sheet. Once again ensure it goes through both holes. Small little tip, if you're in harsh windy conditions you can put a little cable tire through the hole around the rod and that will keep your rod in place even in the harshest windy conditions. Next we'll open your insta on. Obviously, you start by opening the bag through the zips. Which side you spark doesn't matter. Next, you'll, you will release the three tension straps. Pull it out. You want to start with the back part first. You always start on the back. And at this stage, you just want to anchor the awning, but not tension it as yet. You want to tension your awning as lateral as possible. So using the top hole on your Wi-Fi is usually the best spot to start with. 
Next, you will lift your lift up arms to create the pitch on your awning for the flow. At this stage, you want to tension the rear strap to get this arm as lateral as possible and to create tension on your awning roof. When you are using your install, the side fly sheet rod might be in the way. You can remove it. It's not necessary for this bit. So now you want to tension your front arm and you want the front arm to get past 90 degrees tension the arm. When you are going to sleep over with your insta on and not just stop for a little picnic next to the road, you have to lower down your drop down poles to protect your awning from down forces. Put them down and turn it for the Aussie clamp to lock your pole. We've got five all around. On the Commander X, you've got a second set of lift-up arms on your awning to ensure proper water flow. The last bit of neatness is done by lifting up your awning bag. You'll see there's Velcro inside the bag, so you lift it out of the way and you just attach the Velcro to keep it out of the way. The Commander X awning bracket keeps the bag out of the way from your door, so you'll never catch it. Pulling out your kitchen is so easy, even my little five-year-old daughter can do this. Next, you put your grits on for your gas stove. With a gas stove, the wind is a problem. Not anymore. The Commander X comes standard with a wind guard made out of stainless steel that's partitioned, so it clips into each other and protects your stove from the wind. When setting up your rear triangle of your awning, always try to get the pole slightly at an angle for water flow to run off the roof. When opening your Commander X shower, as easy as unlatch, unlatching the top door first, latching it onto the anti loose clips on each side, unlatching your anti loose clips for the arms, both sides, unlatching the door.
the base is down. Now this is strong enough to carry at least 500 kilos. I'm big but I'm not that big. So you can easily just step onto this. Got a little tension pole. Last little bit. The shower curtain already attached. Just zips off. Using a Commander X power pack is very straightforward and simple. The least technical person can operate this system. You will obviously start first by plugging in your 220 volt source if available. On the outside, ensure that the lid of the plug goes in with the plug. Secondly, you'll switch on your main earth leakage. The little red LED indicator will indicate that 220 volt power is being received into the power system. Secondly, you'll switch on your 12 volt battery system that will activate your screen, which will switch that on. Then you've got your multi plug trip switch, which will basically give power to your multi plug exterior as well as the two interior plugs. Next, we can switch on your battery charger running from 220 volt. Commander X comes standard with a 30 amp Victron charger based on the market and that will charge your two 12 volt batteries for you to use. Then the last bit will be your 12 volt outlet circuit breaker. Once that is switched on that will activate your control panel. On your control panel you can individually control your fridge, your outlets, your HELA plugs, your exterior 12 volt plugs as well as your water pump. Always make sure that if you do not that you do have water inside your system before switching on your, your pump. On the outlets, you've got a 12 volt Hela outlet, a 12 volt USB and Type C, as well as a normal 12 volt lighter socket. Your Commander X comes standard with accumulating flow meter for your water system, 150 liters. You just follow the instructions, the bottom one says holding the silver button for 8 seconds. Another 3 and the water level has been reset. Make, just make sure that you have refilled it. Opening the second part of your headroom roof is as easy as unlatching two little latches. One left. One right, and then it open. Your Commander X is outfitted with an interior table on a gas strut assisted patented system. Using it is as easy as opening the little box at the back, lifting it up just slightly, and letting the gas strut do the job. Leg up, and you're ready to have your interior coffee as well. Your Commander X is outfitted with a drawer for a porta potty that will pull your porta potty into the caravan. This is fitted on a heavy duty slider that can carry 180 kilograms. So it's more than strong enough to use it on the drawer. It's got slits to tie it down while you're driving off road. You can use it, and once you're done, you move it out of your way. It doesn't take up space, and you don't have to look at it all day. The gas line to your LPG stove is on a quick release coupling. You can find the gas line in the cavity right over here with your quick release male fitting attached to that. And that you will just connect to the female part. Your instant gas geyser can be found on the right hand side of the nose cone inside your door. It's so on a swing out system to ensure fire ventilation and obviously escaping the heat. 
Attach your gas cylinder up in your tap with the ignited salt. Your gas geyser runs on a D-cell battery. Maybe always keep a spare with you. You always want to protect your install on against wind. With the down poles, you've already protected it for down force. Always make sure that you use a proper guide rope as supplied with carabiner clip and a proper anchor peg to anchor your awning.